Okay, so here we go with the most interesting one. So we started a little bit yesterday with these fractions. Now, today it's one side is not zero. Okay, so we're going to have to make it be that way. So that's going to be our first step. So if I look at number one here, let's just go in and go ahead and I'm going to subtract two from both sides. Okay, so when I do that, I'm going to get something that looks like this. 3x plus 7 over 2x plus 4 minus 2 is going to be less than or equal to 0. Okay, now I want to simplify that left-hand side. You can subtract fractions, but I mean, I know 2 is not a fraction, but let's just put it over 1, so now it is. So how do you subtract fractions? What do you need? Hopefully you're saying, oh, of course, I need common denominators before I can subtract fractions. You're absolutely right. So I need to get two over one to have a denominator of two x plus four. How do you do that? Well, remember that I can multiply uh, by one. I can multiply anything by one and not change its value. So I'm going to multiply this thing by 2x plus 4 over 2x plus 4, right? 2x plus 4 over 2x plus 4 is just 1. So now when I do this, watch where I'm at here. Let's see. So I got 3x plus 7 over 2x plus 4, and I'm going to subtract from that. Now I have to do this multiplication out. So that's going to be 4x plus 8, and it's going to be over 2x plus 4. Do you see what I did there? So I multiplied 2 over 1 by 2x plus 4. Now, you need to be super careful because this is subtraction. So you need to absolutely make so positive that you subtract this whole thing. Okay, that is probably going to be the most common mistake is if kids don't do that. So let's see what I get. I'm going to have 3x minus 4x. So that's going to get me a negative x. But then, right, you need to distribute that negative to both of these. So now I really want to do 7 minus 8. Not plus 8. It's really 7 minus 8. So I get a negative 1. And it's all going to be over the 2x plus 4. Okay, and that's all less than or equal to zero. Okay, so does that make sense so far what I did? Subtract that two, and then you just have to, they're fractions, so I wanna combine them, get the denominators the same, and then do whatever the operation is in the numerator, get it simplified, okay? Now, it's kind of like a problem that we had yesterday, but um, the ones that we did yesterday were a little bit more simplified, and I couldn't factor anything. These, I can factor them, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to factor as much as I can, and I'm going to write it up here. So let's take out a negative 1 from the top, and that will leave me with an x plus 1. And on the bottom, I can take out a 2, and that would leave me with an x plus 2. Okay, less than or equal to 0 is what I'm looking for. All right, so... Once I get the whole one side equal to zero, got it, then I'm going to factor everything. Factor the numerator, factor the denominator. And that's going to reveal to me where my critical values are. So in the numerator, according to this factor, I'm going to have one critical point at negative one. And then the denominator, I'm going to have another critical point from this at negative two. Okay, so let's make our number line. And we're going to put those on there. Negative 1 and negative 2. Oh, that should be the 2. And then I'll have negative 1 here. Okay, so now I'm going to ask myself if I can actually have those two values. And right away, um, the negative 2 is jumping out at me. I can't have that at all because that would give me a 0 in the denominator. So negative 2, you are out. But negative 1, that would make my numerator 0. Uh, but that's fine, and if my numerator is zero, that means the entire left-hand side is zero, and is zero less than or equal to zero? Yes, it is. So I can include negative one 
in my solution here because uh, it works. Okay, now let's plug in let's plug in the values that we've got going on here. So let's see, negative three. So if I just take kind of my factored version here and I plug in some of my values, negative one times negative three plus one would be a negative two over two times negative three plus two would be a negative one. So that's going to get me a positive over a negative, which is a negative. So yes, that works. So that region is good. Okay, and then I'm going to try a number in between negative two and negative one. So I'll go with negative one and a half. So that would be a negative one. Negative one and a half plus one is going to be negative. Downstairs, I'll have two times negative one and a half plus two. It's positive. So I'm gonna have a positive over a positive, which is positive, and positives are not less than or equal to zero. So that's gonna be a no. And then pick a number greater than negative one. So I would pick two, I mean, <laughs> two. <laughs> uh, I'd pick zero because that makes the most sense. So if I plug in zero, that would get me a negative over a positive, Oops. what am I doing here? Negative over a positive, which is a negative, so this is a yes. Okay, now I just need to write this in interval notation. I am going from, let's see, where can I put this? I'll put it way down here. I'm coming from negative infinity. I'm getting all the way up to negative two, but I cannot include it. And then I'm going to jump over to negative one, which I can have. So closed, and then I'm going to go off to positive infinity. Okay, so there is my answer to number one. Let's go ahead. I'm going to do all the odds and leave the evens for you. So let's try three. So again, the same idea. I got to minus that four, very first thing. So minus four from both sides. So negative 2x plus 18 over x plus 6. And I'm going to subtract from that 4 over 1, and that's going to be less than 0. I'm leaving myself a little space there because I know I'm going to need to multiply to get those denominators the same. So I'm going to need to multiply this by x plus 6 over x plus 6. So let's see where I'm at. That's going to get me, uh, I'm just going to write it right here, 4x plus 24 if I multiply that through. And now I'm going to have to subtract this whole thing. So let's see where we land. I'll have negative 2x minus 4x. So that's going to get me a negative 6x. Then I'll have 18 minus 24. So what is that, uh, negative six? And it's all over x plus six. And that's gonna be less than zero. Okay, so step one is done. I got one side as a zero, perfect. Now I wanna factor whatever I can. So from the numerator, I can take out a negative six and I'd be left with x plus one my denominator x plus six. So now I know where my critical values are, negative one and negative six. So, I don't know, I'll put it down here. Negative six, negative one. I absolutely cannot have a value at negative six because that would get me a zero in the denominator, so that's out. Plug in negative one, that would give me a zero in the numerator, which is fine. Is zero less than zero? No, it's not. So that's not fine. That's going to, I have to leave that as a, leave that out for my solution. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in some test points. And so let's start with negative seven. So that would be a negative six. Remember, since I don't care, Maybe I didn't explain this well enough before, but I don't care really about what the value is. I just care if it's positive or negative. So I'm not actually going to plug in negative seven fully, 
right? I'm just going to do this negative, and then if I plug in a negative 7 here, that's going to get me another negative. So I know a negative times a negative gets me a positive in the numerator, and then in my denominator, negative 7 plus 6 is going to get me a negative. So a positive divided by a negative, I'm going to get a negative right there. And negatives are, in fact, less than 0, so this is good. If you don't like that, if it's, it, you know, if you feel like you're not doing the work, I mean, you can plug in negative 7 fully and see what your value is. But um, since I'm really only caring about if it's greater than or less than 0, I can kind of skip over a bunch of computation. So anyway, between negative 6 and negative 1, how about we pick negative 2? So that's going to be a negative times a negative, which is a positive, over... Oh, wait, I shouldn't have done it that big. So my numerator will be positive. My denominator, negative 2 plus 6, will be a positive. So a positive over positive is positive. Positives are not less than 0, so that's a no. And then uh, a number greater than negative 1, I'll just pick 0. So it's going to get me a negative over a positive, which is negative. So this is a yes. All right, and then I'll just write that in interval notation up at the top. I'm coming in from negative infinity. I'm getting all the way up to negative 6. Cannot include negative 6. And then I'm going to jump over. Cannot include negative 1, but I can go off to positive infinity. All right, all right, okay. Not too bad. Now, um, 5. And, oh, for the love, you would think by now I would stop me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Stupid thing. There we go. Okay, five and seven. Those are the, uh, the last two odds. So these are actually a little bit easier because it already has one side as zero. All right. So what do we have to do? We're going to factor everybody. So up top, there's nothing to do. So that one's just going to stay as x minus 7. And then downstairs, that does factor. That becomes x plus 5, x minus 5. So I want that whole thing less than 0. OK, so here I actually have three critical points, positive, 5, negative 5, and 7. So all of them. So, oh, what do I got here? A negative 5, a positive 5, and a positive 7. Okay, now ask yourself, which of these three can I have, if any? I am absolutely not allowed to have negative 5 or positive 5, because either one of those is going to give me a 0 in the denominator, and that's no good. Plug in 7, 0 in the numerator, so I'm going to get 0 on the left-hand side, which is not less than 0, it's equal to, so that one's going to have to be another open circle. All right, and then we'll plug in our values in between. So less than negative 7, how about negative 6? So up top, that would be a negative. Downstairs, that would be... Um, a negative times a negative, so I'd have a positive. So a negative divided by a positive is a negative. Negatives are less than zero, so this is a yes. Okay, in between negative 5 and 5, let's plug in zero. So that would be negative over positive times a negative. It's going to be a negative. Negative divided by negative is a positive, so that is a no. Okay, in between 5 and 7 is 6, so that's going to be um, negative on top, and then if I'm plugging in 6, that's a positive times a positive, negative over positive is negative, so that's a yes in this case, and then greater than 7, let's plug in 8, so that would be positive over positive times positive is positive, so that's a no, I forgot to join those two. Okay, so there's my answers for five. Let's write it in interval notation. I'm coming from negative infinity, and I'm getting all the way to negative five. I cannot include negative five. I'm going to jump over to five, but I can't include it. To seven, can't include it. And that's it.
So there are my answers for five. Cool. All right, one more together. Okay. So top stays x minus seven. Bottom factor x plus four, x minus three. Got it. Okay. Three critical values. One of them is at negative four. One of them is at positive three, and one of them is at positive seven. What can I have? I cannot have negative four. I cannot have positive three. Zeros in the denominator breaks the universe. Oh, I actually heard a funny meme about Corona. Someone said, someone was like, all right, guys, who tried to divide by zero? <laughs> Uh, math teacher humor okay <laughs> so, seven plug it in that's fine i have zero in the numerator so is zero greater than or equal to zero yes it is so i can actually include seven that one works out just fine all right now we plug in every all my intervals okay so negative five up top it's gonna get me a negative over on the bottom Negative times a negative is a positive. So a negative divided by a positive is a negative. And I don't want that. I want greater than or equal to zero in this case. So this is a no. All right, in between negative four and three, let's pop in zero. So it would be a negative over a positive times a negative is a negative. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So that's a yes. In between three and seven, let's plug in four. That'd be negative over positive times a positive so that's going to be a negative there which is not what i want and bigger than seven how about eight so that would be positive over positive times a positive so super positive yes that works all right writing it in interval notation cannot include negative four but i get to go to three which i also can't include but then I get to include seven and it's gonna go off to positive infinity. Whew, okay, so I hope that these made sense. Um, please try the evens, reach out if you are stuck, confused, don't know what's going on, well, let me know. All right.